We don't see much of a chance of a recession over the next year. Uh, in fact, it usually is inflation that's causing the Fed uh, over various business cycles to start to raise interest rates. I think the question becomes how fast they have to do it and how well calibrated those rate hikes are. But is it, it always inflation <clears throat> that, that puts a top on or that, that, that spells the end to a, an expanding business cycle? Or could it be... I mean, I guess in a way it wasn't inflation, was it? Exactly. It so, yeah, look at the last business cycle. I mean, we had overbuilding in the real estate sector. We had uh, problems with asset the financial bubbles. sector, asset bubbles. And when those burst and we see this contraction in spending, that's what caused it. you have any idea what it would, what would do at this time? Because we're, it, rates are still so low. I mean, people were predicting 3% last year for the 10-year. We never got there. That's right. Inflation is... For the record, though, UBS was not predicting 3% in the 10-year <laughs> last year. All right. But, and also... Um, what was my, my other, uh, I mean, nothing, nothing at this point seems like it, it's indicate, oh, it, uh, you got interest rates and we do, the, the Fed didn't hit their inflation target. They, they can't hit 2%. That's exactly right. So, in fact, we're thinking that the Fed's not going to hike as many times as the Fed thinks. They put at the December meeting in their projections that they thought they were going to raise rates about three times next year. We think they're actually only going to get to do it two times. But you're only willing to say it for a year we don't have a recession. So the, the, the next year we could have a recession. I would think, I don't. Is it possible to go out five years and say there's nothing on the horizon that would end the business cycle? Or that's just too So risky. put your hand on your wallet any time an economist is trying to sell you their five-year economic forecast. Uh, lots of bad things happen to good economies, let's put it that way. Really, and yeah. it sort of feels like over the next year we're in pretty good shape. We see job creation going on. Uh, interest rates are still low. Inflation remains low, so there's room it's for some repatriation. Things. we got some companies <clears throat> doing some things, putting some, some money into the... I mean, I know that the $1,000 is only a, a one-shot deal. But to families that are making fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year, I mean, a thousand dollars makes a difference, does it not? So I suspect it should make a difference to to some people. I think one real important question is what would have happened. You know, what's the counterfactual? It sort of seems hard to believe that companies are in this business for altruism. Uh, labor markets are getting tighter, and presumably we needed to see some increase in, in in wages over time anyway. So it's hard to hard to say that this. Why increase, do you think they're doing it this way? Meaning in the form of these one-time bonuses as opposed to in terms of raising wages on a long-term basis. Sure. So I obviously don't have insight into the executives' minds. One possible explanation is it makes it a lot, gives them a lot more optionality. You can do it one time and then not have to repeat it in the future. We've been saying for a long time at Oppenheimer Funds that this is going to be the longest cycle on record. Well, how much long? Can you go five years or do I put my hand on my wallet? Well, I, <laughs> <laughs> I think what you have to be careful about, and when you say does it always end with inflation, if you look at inflation numbers in the U.S. and Europe, they're, they're moving higher but not significantly. So these cycles are going to end with inflation higher, the Fed tightening policy, the yield curve flattening, the dollar stronger, and pie yield spreads blowing out. We're a long way away, in our opinion, from any of that happening. I think what you have to be careful with, to, to Seth's point, is that as the Federal Reserve attempts to raise interest rates a handful of times in 2018, we got to watch the 10-year Treasury rate. I mean, the, the 10-year rate has been forecasted to climb, again, you said not at UBS, not at Oppenheimer Funds either, 3%, 3.5%. It's not happening because you don't have the pickup in inflation. So you could flatten the yield curve if you see that start to start to happen, then curtail your expectations on the cycle. Short of that, I think this cycle has a lot of room to go.